Quite a few years ago now, I decided that I want to get into home recording. I started out using this quarter inch to 3.5mm adapter and I recorded into Audacity. After which I pretty quickly realized that that whole thing wasn't going to work. After I wanted to make metal music and well, Audacity doesn't have neither MIDI capabilities nor a built-in high gain amp sim. So I found out about Reaper, downloaded that and started my search for some free metal plugins. Now what I found back then was pretty sh compared to what we have nowadays especially some of the stuff some of the stuff i found back then was horrific back then and it's still horrific now and nobody should use that having said that some of the other plugins i found back then were pretty sick like they still sound good to this day and quite a few of them made it on today's list if you want to hear the entire metal song i produced using only the plugins i'm going to show you today stick around till the end of the video we're also going to do like a walkthrough type of deal where i'm going to show you how i produced and mixed everything let's start with guitar amp sims there are quite a few of those out there even back several years ago i remember having a plethora to choose from most of them though pretty bad quite unusable i'd say but i found three well actually four plugins that are diamonds in the rough if you will the first of which is the ignite amps and sto tones emissary <laughs> is a completely free two-channel amps in VST that also comes with an IR loader plugin and six IRs to choose from and blend between. If you don't know what an IR is, it's basically a wave file, an audio file, which is a snapshot of how a cabinet sounds mic'd in a room. You load that file into an IR loader plugin and you basically get a cabinet simulation. The Ignite Amps Emissary sounds pretty damn well and it also has a clean channel by the way, which the second amp on my list does not. And that second amp is the ML Sound Lab Roots plugin. <laughs> This is Fluff Signature plugin and it sounds amazing. Like you heard it, it sounds so fucking good. I'm pretty sure this is the most popular free high gain metal amp sim. Like every YouTuber has made a video on this because it's it's ridiculous that it's free, you know? It's quite unbelievable how something this polished sounding is completely free. In my opinion, it sounds quite a bit better than the emissary but it does not have a clean channel so that's why i'm recommending both of them now the third mc i'm gonna recommend is a bit different than these two it's called the neuro amp modeler and as you can see it also looks a bit different that's because the idea of this plugin is not to be a digital recreation of an actual amplifier but rather a loader for user-made profiles of their own amplifiers for example all england has made a profile of his rando satan amplifier you then download that file drop it into the nam plugin drop in an ir as well and you have a rando satan tone Now, with the neural amp modeler, you don't have as much control as you do with the other two plugins because the EQ controls here don't work the way they would usually do on an amplifier. And also, do keep in mind that there's a lot, like a lot, of very, very, very sucky sounding profiles for this thing out there. You really have to dig through a mountain of awful ones to find one usable one. Down in the description, I'm gonna leave a link for Ola England's video where he gives away his profile. And I'm also gonna link a video where he gives away an IR of his Hesu to Demon cap so you can get an entire Ola England tone. Now, there is technically a better version of the neuro amp modeler out there. It's made by a company called WaveMind and it's essentially just a different user interface for the same software. It looks way better and it also has some very cool features. Like it has a tuner in there, you can save presets. You can also load multiple instances of NAM within the same plugin. So for example, you can load a profile of a pedal as well as a profile of an amp. You can also load two IRs and blend between them. And there is also these instigator and aggravator effects. This version of the plugin also comes with a pretty big library of amp profiles, pedal profiles and IRs. Now, they're not my particular cup of tea, but I'm like 90% sure if you dig around, you can get some decent tones out of it. Now, let's move on to drum VSTs. Here, I'm gonna recommend a really, really, really old plugin. I'm talking about the Manda Audio Empty Power Drum Kit 2. This one I've been using for like six seven years now probably and i've done drum vst shootouts like drum vsts and drum libraries 
and this one sounds about as good as the GGD stuff. Maybe not quite as good and it definitely has a bit less functionality than those. I was about to say plugins, but they're actually contact libraries, they're not plugins. But like this one is so much older and it's free, completely free. It's also way lighter on your CPU. Overall, it's a great, 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 great plugin. And it also has some grooves built into it. Now, MIDI bass. Here, I'm not very happy with my choice, to be honest with you. I'm again choosing a pretty old plugin, and that is the Forefront bass. This one sounds pretty unrealistic. I don't like it that much, but it's the best one I've found so far. It at least goes below standard tuning, so that's a very big plus. I also found this very cool free bass amps in plugin made by a guy named Jeremy Fox. And when you combine these two, you get a tone like this. Any better sounding bass VSTs, please, please, please let me know down in the comments. I really want to make this channel a space where we can all share different tips, tricks and practices surrounding trying to record metal at home. And I really need your help here. Please, if you have any thoughts, don't hold them for yourself. Leave them down in the comments. And if what I just said sounds interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe. I'd be forever grateful. Okay, thanks. Now, other virtual instruments. The first two that come to mind are bought by Spitfire and they are the Labs and all of its different sound libraries and the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discovery Edition. I genuinely cannot believe that these are free. They sound so good. Spitfire is a household name when it comes to virtual instrument libraries. All the film composers basically work with Spitfire stuff and the fact that they have free versions out there is amazing. They sound so polished and so professional. They really take a production to the next level. And also a cool thing about the Labs plugin is that they keep updating it. Like they keep adding a new library every few months or so. That's pretty cool of them. surprisingly useful for metal free VST instrument out there is the Xsub by Simply Sounds. This one is more geared towards like EDM and trap and electronic music producers. It's basically an 8 to 8 sub bass type of deal and it really makes your entire bass tone way more full and way more modern sounding. Supermassive. Although most of those have some built-in reverbs and they generally sound pretty okay, they're not awful, but it's pretty hard to make them sound interesting. That's exactly why I would recommend the Valhalla Supermassive plugin. It's basically a delay and reverb and there's some modulation. Also Valhalla is a pretty household name when it comes to time-based effects. This one is free, sounds great. I used it to simulate a drum mic because the empty power drum kit plugin that I was talking about doesn't have one. So that's where the Valhalla Supermassive found its home in my project. Now, I do believe that you're completely able to mix an entire song using only the built-in plugins in your DAW, even if you're using Audacity, but I decided to share this one plugin with you anyways. I'm talking about the Dead Duck Audio Diddy channel. This is basically an SSL style channel strip that has a gate, an EQ, a compressor, a limiter and a high and low pass filter. The reason I would recommend using something like this rather than the built-in plugins in your DAW is just because it's way more fun to operate, like it's way more fun to mix with and it also gives you a way more analog feel if you will of the whole process and so it ended up being on quite a few of the tracks in my mix. And lastly, two mastering plugins, the LoudMax 64 by Thomas Mundt and the Loudness Meter 2 by Yulin. These basically do what they're supposed to do. The LoudMax actually sounds so good, like it's better than the FabFuture Pro IL 2, in my personal opinion. It's so smooth, it rounds off so well. Again, it basically just does its job, you turn it up and it 
makes everything louder. The loudness meter is just a loudness meter. It shows you how loud your music is in a pretty sleek looking interface. And now, just as I promised in the beginning, here's the song and we'll do a quick walkthrough after that. So let me show you how I did all of this. This here is my drum bus. I don't have anything right now on it. This is just the MIDI, which doesn't have any sound. And these are all the tracks that I routed out of the Empty Power drum kit. It has some pretty cool routing capabilities. I basically have the audio from Empty Power drum kit. I have it split into kick. Here I have just a simple Diddy channel with some compression and EQ. A snare, again, a Diddy channel with compression and EQ, some tones which I didn't do anything on them, some symbols, again, nothing on the track, and there's the room mic, which is basically all of these ones consolidated into one track, and as I said, and as I already showed you, it has a Valhalla Supermassive on it. The drums together all sound like this. See how it really glues it all together, it really adds some space. We continue to the bass bus. On the bass bus, we have a little sidechain compression from Ableton. You can do that with basically every single compressor. It just basically ducks the volume of the bass when the kick hits, as you can see. We also can have a data channel with a bit of compression and EQ. This is the bass that I already played for you, the forefront bass. With the Growler plugin, uh, just on some preset, like literally just the first preset. Underneath that, we have the X sub, which is our sub bass. Again, I just use some preset. The bass buzz basically sounds like this. Let's continue to guitars. Here on the bus, I have a little Diddy channel with just some EQ to shape the whole guitar sound. I have a little bit of sidechain compression again. Something I decided to try sounds pretty cool. Makes the snare pop a little bit more. This here is the rhythm guitar bus. It has nothing on it. The left rhythm guitars have a whole chain of plugins. First, a gate. This is the Ableton gate. Again, in every single DAW, you should have a native gate plugin. Then we have Oh, I actually totally forgot about this one. My bad. This is the TSC 808. It's basically a free Tube Screamer plugin. I just used it to boost the emissary, which is then going to the NAR IR, which it comes with. And on the right side of the rhythm guitars, we have just the ML Sound Lab roots, Amped roots, Floss plugin. I also have these little guitars here, which are just... The intro guitars, uh, I'm using the Amped Roots again with just a simple EQ. Again, this is Ableton's built-in EQ, but every single digital audio workstation has an EQ plugin that you can do exactly that with. Let's continue to the programming. This is a programming bus, which has again an EQ8 from Ableton, which is just a high pass, so we don't muddy up the whole mix. You can have a Diddy channel with just a bit of compression to keep everything under control. I'm actually gonna play the laps for you because they sound pretty interesting. You know, this is just like a high-end sparkle ear candy thingy. <laughs> the 
This one sounds very doomy to me, like it's very 8-bit, yet a bit modern. Again, just some ear candy. These combined sound like this. And with the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Here's how the mix sounds without all of this programming. And here's wet. And that's basically everything there is to this session. I have the meter here, I checked with this, and this is just for sending audio to OBS. This is a quick tip, by the way, if you ever wanna record like a screen grab of your DAW, you just have to put the RIA stream plugin, which comes in the RIA plug suit. Like you can download just the plugins for Reaper without downloading the software. It's completely free and you can add it to your master, set it to send audio to local broadcast. And then in OBS, you just add an audio track, with the real stream as an audio effect, just receiving the audio. This is another free plugin I didn't include in the main a row, the real stream. It's really helpful. I use it quite a lot. That's about it. I really hope I showed you some cool stuff you hadn't seen before. Again, if you know of any other cool free plugins for Meadow, leave them down in the comments. I know of a few more of these, so if you maybe help me with the rest, I maybe can probably do a part two of this video. I'm especially interested in the bass category, by the way. If you know of any bass VSTs, that would be sick. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this and bye-bye.